It's the semifinals. We're going to break down the top four teams as they quest for the Summoner's Cup. Live from New York City, it's Saturday. <clears throat> Primetime League starts right now. Mega Nose going up, the boomerang, the excitement, the hyper. Duke survives. Ryu gets himself a triple. There's a quadra. H2K demolish NX. Rocks Tigers back on form, hoping to win a world championship. Hello and welcome everyone to Primetime League. My name is David Freak Turley, joined here by three amazing people. First up, Jake Spawn Tiberi, then Martin DeFiscio Lunga, and of course, who else but Chris Papa Smithy Smith. Gentlemen, welcome to New York City. Thank you. Thank you. I like this intro way more because you didn't insult me. So this thank intro, you very much. This is our third intro. Yeah. I insulted you or Papa Smithy in the other ones, but we decided this was the better uh, one. I am untouchable. I have not been insulted once. I in just the like you the most. Thank you've you. been you've been the most kind to me of all, so. I'm most excited for you being here. I like you too. Absolutely. And of course, I am here in place of Timmons in the third, but that's okay. I'm going to do the best that I can in his stead. Let's talk about the best of the best at Worlds so far. We've got stat leaders in various categories. Let's start with the KDA stat leaders, Smeb, Bangi, Baney, Bang, and Core JJ. A lot of low letters here. A lot of Bs in the names. Yeah, we love the KDA stats. And a lot of the Korean guys up here, obviously, because three of them, funny enough, or three teams are now in top four. I think it stands out that uh, top lane KDA is so much lower than everything else. Yeah. Obviously top laners, it's rare they go like 10-0 or something. Often they're also the guys who split pushing, getting caught out, or in the front line in team fights. Smep though, uh, playing pretty well. Could have done better. Sure. I think actually, I'm not saying it's disappointing, but I want to see more. I mean, Rocks have lost some games as well, which invariably going to have a lower KDA in those games. Bang to me is probably the most impressive. He's got the highest number, so that's on a simple level very impressive. But as a guy who has traditionally had high KDAs, had very high KDAs in Korea as well. A lot of the time previously, I thought it was because the meta kind of really suited Bang. A lot of Lulu mid, a lot of utility to set him up, but this has more been just the Bang show. I'm gonna call it that, that's right. The, the Bang, Bang show, show. The Bang at Worlds show. and uh, yeah, he's doing a great job. Two years running, he's had a really good Worlds performance. I mean, Core JJ also, uh, also like having a really nice tournament so far. Samsung looked lost one more time playing Wraith. Now they've got Core, and he plays a lot of squishy support, so being able to do that is actually quite impressive, you know, with the likes of the Zyra, with the likes of the Karma. All right, gentlemen, let's move it down to a stat that is full of IMA players. Kill participation. Oh, yes, Amazing J, Trick, Mami, Jin Jiao, and Wraith. What do you guys think about those players? Who wants to start? Let's talk about kill participation as a stat for a second, okay. however, because this kind of is that double-edged sword for junglers and supports when they have high KP. It looks fantastic. It means they're roaming on the map. When IMA as a team have high KP, it just means they're getting absolutely nothing done in the laning phase. And I think that really hurt IMA in this tournament. I think it's fair to say. A lot of things hurt IMA in this the tournament. The team fighting was but... good, though, but... Uh, it... 40 minute team fights don't win you yeah. games all the time. No, it, it is definitely like kill participation is so weird because even as a great player, you might have a low kill participation if your team is doing really well on their own. Like if people are getting solo kills in lane, you sit in the bot lane, you're like, guys, come on, like now my kill participation goes down. In this case, though, for Trigger as a jungler, I think it is actually a great stat. G2 was pretty active in the early game, he was part of almost anything they did. And that's just kind of, it kind of shows how important he is for G2. I mean, kill participation as stat is different this year with the no lane swap meta back in the past because there was less action in the early game actually average kill participation would have been higher you look at a team like rocks tigers last year i guess Ku tigers they had very high kill participation because they played a slow early game but they were still a strong team they were still runners up at the tournament but on average the best teams you know someone like duke actually had the lowest kill participation out of any top laner in lck in the regular season just because he played a split push role mm -hmm. not because he was a particularly good or bad player. Right, and you also see season. it sort of inversely correlated with landing phase power. You've got teams like H2K where Odwamna starts the game like four and zero. It's like, well, sorry for giving, you weren't top lane. Exactly. So zero, you know, goose egg KP for you. Either way though, still fun stat to see who was involved in a lot of the team's kills. It's kind of fun to look at that. So before we kind of dive further into the future, talk about the semifinals, let's take a look back at the quarters, listen to the comms from some of the teams and hope you guys understand Korean because it's time for mic check. Guys, don't get cooking. We stomped them really hard that game just because we wanted to be too top hard, but if we didn't win that 2v2 top, it wouldn't have been such an easy game. Top die. Uh uh. Top die. 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 Top
for Mickey Day. Okay, they have a pink here. I'll stay, I'll stay. I, th I think oh, Karma will come. Yo, yo, Karma's coming, coming, coming. Yo, come, 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 come
That also meant like top lane would get a counter pick, so suddenly it's much easier to win your lane as a top lane if you have like Kennen versus Nar. Also you get Someday who for some reason sure. They, dives in and dies they, 500 times. They get but, Core JJ, they pick three winning lanes. Is it the winning lane strategy and pick ban, or is it Core JJ? It was so hard to actually... Mix. Just, yeah. It must be. But I, the thing about Samsung, though, is really cool, is that this tournament, and I think it's because, again, they're no longer playing against, like, Rox and SKT. So this tournament, they've been able to, with Core JJ, have a really good early game, a great mid game and still the great late game they had back in Korea at the same time. So the reason they looked so strong and had like zero issues versus like C9 or or like if you look at like RNG in groups is because they can actually match the early game of these teams and then just be from the get-go a better late game team as well. So in this matchup specifically, if you look at it at an early game only team in H2K, against the team was actually pretty well rounded now on Samsung, and that is why Samsung comes in as like the big favorites to win this one. It does look incredibly clean. I do think at the same time, however, you do have to look at the regular season and what happened when Samsung did get put in holes and how slowly they wanted to play out the game. I think that if you don't uh, punish some of the mid-game mistakes that H2K made, you, they, they just will win the game out of a war of attrition. And we've seen that so many times this tournament where it just goes later, your 7,000 gold lead is actually insurmountable because you're picking these laning uh, 80 carries like Caitlyn that can see drop turrets. It's just so easy to knock them down. So there is still that worry that if you allow H2K, especially with Ryu rolling the way he is, going into arguably the strongest member of Samsung as well in Crown, I do think that there are ways that H2K win this series. And, and I kind of oh, agree yeah. with what you're saying this morning, that Samsung deserve optimism depend, uh, based on how they've played so far, but cautious optimism yeah. in that it has been for a short run of games. If we give uh, Core JJ credit for improving the early game, maybe even tightening up the pick ban, can we also know for sure that Wraith wasn't one of the reasons why they were so good late game? They haven't been taking it super late like they often did in LCK. So if their previous strat with Wraith was take it late, the team fights will work itself out. We can't just plug and play and say good early, good meet, good good mid game, good late. We're not 100% clear on that for this new Samsung. And I think the late game point is fair, but I, I also do think we've seen Samsung like enough in the late game, not just team fight, but the way they move around the map, the way they set up Baron. And that's where H2K really have their big problem. And we saw it against NX, we've seen it in groups, seen it a lot in Europe before the tournament started. Like when H2K gets outside of the lane phase, they have to set up these big objectives again, like the Baron. They have to call in the moment while they're on the Baron, do we disengage, do we stay on Baron, what do we do? That's where things can get really rough because they are a team, again, communication-wise. A lot of them are very loud, they yell a lot. They don't really say what's gonna happen in 30 seconds. They're like, let's go Baron. They're on the Baron, they're like, what do we do? Do we disengage, do we finish? Like, it can get super hectic. And that's where things can go really wrong for H2K. Yeah, it certainly can. But at the same time, well, I just want to go back to the fact that this was a team that was playing against good late game team fighters in group stage, you know, like the EDG, like the AHQ. And they were still able to just clean them up so handily in the early game that this never became an issue. So I do think that, you know, they're going to fight fire with fire in the early game. And then if H2K just continue to get these massive leads in all three lanes. I mean, even Odawamne now is just stepping up. And if Kube slumps, which is a real possibility because he hasn't sure. always been this great, uh, it's going to just be, I, I think it's one of those matchups that is so snowball-y based off how these teams pick for lane and pick for the early game. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. It's going to be a fun semi-final. Let's get your predictions in real quick. Papa Smith, start with you. Who wins? It's a really close one. Um, Korean analyst, I'm still going to say Samsung, but 3-1, I think, Samsung. Is you? Yeah, I was going to go 3-1 Samsung as well. I think it's kind of like 70-30 in favor of Samsung. Uh, I definitely think H3A can take a game or two or win the yep. early game, but I'm not sure if they have the consistent late game to actually close out enough games. Yeah, I, see, I, I'm really torn on this one because I do actually have a lot of faith now in H2K's uh, early game, but is it enough to get over a powerhouse like Samsung who has just continued to get better? Probably not. However, I think this will probably be our first five game series just because I think they are so evenly matched in that early game and it's going to be a coin toss of whoever wins out on that. Heads or tails, Samsung, H2K? I'm going with Samsung. Going with Samsung. All right, thank you guys very much. They know the team. Let's see if you guys know the pro. All right, everybody. Time finals time. We're down to only four teams left, so it should be easy to know this week's pro player. On Tuesday, we tweeted out a glimpse of one of your semi-finalists, and if you'd have guessed that it was Samsung Galaxy's mid laner crown, then congratulations, you are correct. Your cognitive powers are amazing. 
Now, Crown started as a career, uh, sorry, started his career as a Korean import in Brazil's CB Law, but since then, he's moved back to Korea, and he's found his way in a top four at Worlds, playing for Samsung Galaxy. He's one of the top millionaires in the world. He was rated in the top 20 by some of the amazing analysts that were sitting to my right earlier as well. He has the third highest KD of mid laners at Worlds at 5.67. He's got 611 damage per minute, and you can catch him in action this Saturday as his Samsung Galaxy squad take on the Europeans of H2K for a spot in the finals. All right, gentlemen, let's talk about the other semifinal matchup. This will be happening on Friday. It's SK Telecom T1 versus Rox Tigers. You all predicted that Samsung would be in the finals, so let's talk about which team's going to meet them. Yeah, this is a big one. I'm sure this is your dream, basically. Madison Square Garden, you got SKT versus the Rox Tigers as well. Uh, definitely two of the heavy favorites coming into the tournament. I think the two teams who are, many people would consider the strongest. I think Samsung looked very good in quarterfinals as well, but maybe against a weaker opponent. Uh, and this game really, like, to me, comes down to so much of like individual players like Peanut and Smep. If Rox is gonna win, if they can actually perform at the top top level in this best of five in standard lanes, I think that's gonna give a big advantage to Rox Tigers. But they've had that disadvantage in the past and not been able to use it. Yeah, it's a match steeped in history. I mean, on a simple level, right? Rematch of last year's final, so world final rematch here in the semifinals. I think SKT have to come in heavy favorites. When it comes to predictions, we'll get to those. It can be a bit more muddied, but this is a team that has always had the wood over Rock's Tigers. They've always matched up well. Famously in the mid lane, that mismatch between Faker and Kuro. Kuro's had a good tournament, looked great in the quarters on Aurelian Sol, but Faker so often takes over the game, decides it against Kuro, who's more of that laning focus player that will be a bit more defensive. So there's a lot of what ifs and it's a lot of things. And when it comes to predicting this game, I know I've gone back and forwards multiple times, just trying to work out who I think will win on the day. I think the thing that makes this even harder to pick out of, you know, Rocks or SKT. It's the fact that neither of these teams have been challenged all worlds. I mean, both came out of very easy groups. Both had, you know, the Chinese opponents, EDG with an emergency sub. RNG did exactly what we thought. They had a great game and then they had a really disappointing series after that with just shocking early games. So I think that when you have a look at this, uh, historically, Rox is a team that likes to speed the game up during the mid game, and SKT has always been able to deal with that. They've got the mid laner that has the upper edge, they've got the duo lane that's always been good. So, the more you look at this, on if you just take the untestedness out, uh, I really do think that it still skews in favor of SKT. I do think that we have to highlight this the first time these two teams will play each other on or after 615, so where it is just a standard lane only. A uh, lot of picks, you know, at Worlds have been focused around laning phase a lot. Like, look at Jay's top lane as an example. And with how poorly Duke played against RNG, I can see a big mismatch happen up there in the top lane. Uh, Blank obviously is a guy who traditionally has done well against uh, Peanut in best of fives in the past. So that's where if he can get the edge again, yeah, that's heavily in favor of SKT. But if Peanut is able to perform like he did in the quarterfinal, uh, as I said this earlier, I think Rox Tigers in the standard lane meta then can have the advantage. The problem is always Faker in mid. Koro has to just be on like Aurelian Soul if he can or on Wave Play Duty. But we've seen that in the past. It didn't work. I still think Rox though in the standard lane meta have enough tools to beat SKT. But SKT have them figured out. And that's why they've always been able to do so well against them. They had them figured out. And again, I like the fact that you talk about 615 because when you weigh the history stuff, you have to weigh it based on where we're at now. The biggest single variable on 615 and standard lanes, to me, is the jungle. The fact that the jungle is that great unknown. We don't have the lane swaps, the tempo, all the other catch-all words that unfortunately we've had to drop from our vocabularies. Peanut looked outstanding in the quarterfinals. No other put it, first game on Olaf, dominated. He and even playing the best opponent at that stage. I mean, he was... wait, wait. Who was he playing? Not the best opponent. Clear Love we're talking about now? <laughs> Clear Love did not have a good quarter quarter final. Final. Yeah. yeah. Look, I agree with that point, but would you say Blank is also not the best opponent? No, MLXC was as bad as Clear Love, so that's not really much of a difference there. And even Blank, you know, not on one of the higher ed on one of the higher ebbs of the jungle either. So I really think that he has the chance. And I really feel like although there was a lot of history before, you know, for example, we're highlighting the three finals that Rox Tigers were beaten by SKT. They finally won a final. There isn't that same PTSD this time. Mm -hmm. So the hope is with Peanut being that variable with 615, is this the time that they can finally shed history and beat SK Telecom? Well, you 
keep those all in mind. The jungle mismatch may be helping Rocks Tigers kind of break history. Let's go with predictions. Same orders before. Papa Smithy, start with you. I mean, this is today, you know, we're filming this a couple of days before the semifinals. Right now, I think Rocks Tigers, but it could go. I need to watch more video. I need to keep going. Where I'm at right now, with my understanding of the matchup right now, it's Rocks Tigers, but SKT, it could, could always get it done on the day. Yeah, this is uh, very much a 50-50, but I'm actually going to go Rocks Tigers as well. Kind of hope that was going to be the only one, the unique guy, but now I can see <laughs> another one is joining me here. Uh, I think, honestly, that Smep and Peanut will win the top side, and I think this meta fits Koro pretty well with things like Aurelian Soul and Victor being used a lot, and he will use that to at least survive versus Faker. I don't buy it. I, I, you just never bet against SKT, especially on the world stage. Faker is, once again, just outstanding at the moment, and I think that is the biggest mismatch on the map. I mean, you can talk about everything else, but I'm really still not a big believer in Koro, so uh, I'm going to go with SKT. I think that they've had their measure in the past, and that on the world stage, you just kind of go with this team. They're too damn good. All right, finally, a split desk. Guys, thank you very much, and you've heard their prediction. Now, let's see how well you guys predicted by checking out the Twitter segment. Last week, we asked what team would get the most Elder Dragons, and for a spot in Hall of Fame, how many Elder Dragons would they get? Well, if you're one of the whopping 147 people who gets SK Telecom T1, then congratulations. You went for the easiest option, and you were rewarded for your efforts. Woo! One of you, though, did get, uh, well, a bigger reward. You went above and beyond and got the actual number correct, which is one Elder Dragon. So congratulations to at MV underscore jungler. Get yourself a new skin code. Props. Let's talk about this week's question. We want to know which team will take the fastest first tower. And for a spot Hall of Fame, what will that time be? I'm going to say H2K and 7 minutes and 12 seconds. Hit us up at Elevel Esports with the hashtag PTL for your final chance at getting into the PTL Hall of Fame. Welcome to this week's This or That. I'm here with Spawn. And this is our first time doing this. We have not seen the slides, but uh, Freak has been a jerk and laughed at us already for some reason. We don't know what's on them, actually. So I think we should just pop the cherry and get to the first one. More oh. predictable. Oh, 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 oh. Queer, queer with three teams in semis, <laughs> NA with none. I think uh, both are very predictable, honestly. Really? <laughs> yeah, fairly predictable. I don't think so. I think that lots of people thought that that one was But that was only happen. TSM, right? There was only that's TSM. that's one. But I mean, how many people actually predicted they would make semis? I'm, Realistically. I'm going to say this is more predictable. I'm going to say this is more predictable because I didn't actually that's know if Samsung. <laughs> yeah, that. So I'm going to say that's my I'm first saying time. this. This one is uh, very predictable. Not everyone expected Samsung to make it all the way to semis maybe, before the tournament maybe started. Maybe you didn't. You should have done your research. I'm right? going to go with that. <laughs> Sadder to see go. Uzi or ANX? Well, they, they actually got far. If anything, I was happy when they made it as far yeah. as they did. Uzi, on the other hand, got bought in for like a big contract, the ability to be able to did win Did he worlds. cry in the end? He didn't cry. Uh, no, but he, I mean, he's getting a lot of flack right now. I'm going to say this one is definitely sad at the Seago. I'm obviously the LPL representative, yeah. so I was heartbroken. Well, actually, I, I'm pretty proud of ANX. I think it's cool what they showed. I think it's great they made out of groups. So I don't think it was sad to see them go, so I'm going to have to go with this as well. But you weren't very sad about that. I wasn't sad. I wasn't sad about anything. I have no emotions. <laughs> I'm just not sad at all. So Heartless. Let's see what we got. Better World's performance. Oh, that one. 100%. I don't know. You got to you gotta keep in mind, Jankus comes in, you know, he's not being looked at as a top 20 player or top 20, you know, on our list at least. He was 25 on mine, not on yours. This guy, <laughs> this guy solo beat the best jungler, your best jungler in the world. Just destroyed it. I don't know. Better world's performance outside of groups. Ah, uh, no bias at all. No bias in, at all. In groups. No bias at all. This. So depending on the groups and or then outside. Overall, as in world, overall, world's performance. World's performance. I'm uh, gonna, I'm gonna go with this yeah. because he <laughs> is part of carrying H2K and they made it all the way to the semi-final and they're great in groups. <laughs> He is so much better. That's, that's so he's better. better. I'm not saying he's not better. That's not what I'm saying. Silver scrapes at MSG. Ooh. I will go with this. 
for sure. Definitely. We're gonna get five games in either Samsung HK or SKT rocks, and it's gonna be silver scrapes. Yeah. This one for sure. I actually hold it for the HTK Samsung one, and I'm gonna keep saying HTK because that's how I pronounce them. But uh, that one, yeah. More Ooh. crucial band. Depends who it is. Are you Kuro or Faker? Because I have a different answer for <laughs> different players at the moment. I'm gonna say. Ah, you're right. These are boring because you're right. <laughs> um, I have to go with this though. Ooh. Because this one, so if you have a mid laner who's not as good as the other mid laner. Yeah. Which there's only one left now. Uh, sure, just fair enough. Koro for the sake I, of I'm the just saying, I'm just saying, if you have Koro, <laughs> you want this one the most on your team because he just goes and helps the other lanes. Yep. Uh, so if you're Ryu, Faker, you can play Vlad into this, yeah. Tom Kench and that kind of stuff. So. Faker took a turret at 14 minutes solo. I mean, this, again, he didn't have any competition. I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna say Rodian Soul uh, because it can win you games so easily. This is the most I've ever seen you wrong in a short period of time. That was definitely more bad than <laughs> I don't know. Close up fast. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one, you didn't even have to plug it in to watch your follow up. We don't got a chance this one. It's just gonna blow up on its own. So. Uh, C9, Samsung Galaxy Note 7. I heard there was a fix to this one, but then apparently it was not a fix. You can't fly with this one. At least you can fly with these guys. I've seen apparently you can't actually fly with it. You're not allowed to charge it on the plane anymore. You have to know, turn it off. I text messages. They, my plane was delayed by four hours. Thank you very because much. Because of this one? Or uh, because of this one? I just think it's a bad <laughs> airline. It could have been C9. I'm not sure. All right. Well, All right. you know what? I think you guys figured it out. Let's go with that. We go yeah, C9. C9. All right. All right. Cloud C9. nine, disappointing as usual. Thank you guys very much. This is my top eight. It's better than TSM did. Well, I can do it for this or that. Coming in at number five, Samsung's crown turned around a three-man gank and slipped away with the kill. Right now, support roams mid off to the base. Complete surprise. He's likely going to be at least one summoner blown here when Smoothie combos. And the question has been, is the communication there between Smoothie and Meteos? For sure it was on that one. Crown moves fast. Oh, he gets Smoothie. the sick though. Petrifying gaze. Smoothie gets taken down. Crown gets the 1v3 first blood. Complete outplay. At number four, Cloud9's Jensen commanded control of the mid lane in this 1v1 versus Samsung's Crown. Shockwave in the mid lane, petrifying gaze back onto Jensen. He flashes oh. the ball. Oh, Jensen comes oh. up with a clockwork wind up. Every time Crown wants to walk back and go into his QE pattern, he is under threat of getting ulti. Despite the fancy flash, it's just enough for Jensen to take it down. H2K's Ryu was out for blood as he picked up a quadra kill in our number three play. But Ryu's in the back. Ryu, good pro about looking for Kira. He's just too tanky. Takes out the portal. Ryu follows him after slaying the Syndra. And they're going to keep running in. Stay off. Locked up by the Rootsies. Ryu grabs a double. Now Smurf carting it out with a frozen mount and a bit of help from Miracle. Damage is almost enough. But Alpha Given's turn to turn it around. They're looking for Ryu, but they can't get it. Miracle going to get his face crewed off. He's not careful as Ryu gets himself a triple. There's the Quadra. Now going to chase it down for the Penta. Liquid. Don't give it away. He's bailing back to the fountain. Hopping into number two. SKT's Duke came out on top as he outplayed four members of RNG. Luke was in trouble. Duke's got a GA, a cleaver, a mallet. He's looking for more, taking on three. That GA will pop shortly. Flashes away. Ignites burning him down. Guardian Angel pops. The rest of SK Telecom, they're down in the bottom lane. Shahu's left alone. He hops over the minions. Sidesteps a deadly flourish. MLXG's looking for the kill. Sonic Wave connects. Resonating strike. Mega Nas going up. The boomerang. The excitement. The hyper. Duke survives. And in our number one play of the week, RNG's MLXG spiced things up when he saved Looper's life. They didn't know where the lease in is, so they don't go for the play. Now maybe onto Looper. Looper's in trouble, Cocoon, but he gets off the slicing maelstrom. There's so much damage. Proto belt forward, MLXG knocks him. He's still alive. What on earth was that? MLXG has come to this fourth game to play. He comes up huge. MLXG just repositions gets the kick off, and then safeguards Looper right after, and keeps him alive. Unbelievable! So, when you're watching the semifinals this Friday and Saturday, and you see a big play, remember to tweet to us, at LOL Esports, hashtag the Penta, and if it's good enough, we will put it in the video for sure.
Now, once again, we'd like to take the time to mention the great work the guys over at the Riot Impact Challenge are doing. If you want to support one of four great causes that we have partnered with, and you want to get into a running to maybe get a free trip to Barcelona for All-Stars, then head over to omaze.com slash Riot Games to see how you can enter into the sweepstakes for a chance to win some other fabulous prizes, again, including that trip to All-Stars. Now, we've already made it to New York. It's beautiful. This is not a green screen. This is really the city. But if you want to see how the road trip to Worlds got over to New York, check out the last hit. Thank you so much for coming on this road trip with me, man. No problem, man. I'll, I'll do anything with you. See, that's what I'm talking about. Listen, quarterfinals in Chicago was pretty awesome, I'm not going to lie. But semifinals, New York City, Madison Square Garden. You and me, dude. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Hell yeah, man. <sighs> Rocks Tigers are going to be there. We're going to be there. Dude, I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait to go, man. This walk's pretty nice. <laughs> Where's the RV at? <laughs> um. I don't want to talk about it. I'm dying. I just can't take this. I'm dying too. All right, let's just hitchhike, man. Listen, put your thumb out. Somebody's bound to pick us up. Come sure. On. Yeah, just put it out. Listen, it's fine. Oh, God, it's so Dude, it's hot. totally safe. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. It's going to work. It's going to work. Just, yeah, sure? there you go. Look cuter. Oh, I think I see somebody. Oh my god, here, hopefully. Oh, my god, oh yes, that yes, yes, hair. yes. Hopefully. Oh, it's a convertible. Hopefully you stop. God. Hopefully you stop. So rich. Hopefully you stop. They're oh, pulling god. over. Oh, and it's god. a hot it's chick. A chick. It's a hot oh, chick. My god, it's really? a hot chick. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh. Oh. Hey. Oh, hey. Hey! hey. hey. What are you How doing you here, man? Dude, what are you doing here? I'm going to New York semifinals. What? Yo, can you give us a us ride? Too. Yeah, get on in. Dude, this is a badass convertible. Can I drive it? Yes, I can. I knew I could. Oh my god. I'm gonna make them think about it. I'm gonna make them think about it. Motherfucker. Oh my god. Listen, Except it's only a couple hours. Alright, let's do it. Yeah. Hey, help me out of here. Help hey, him out. Come out. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Kiwi, Come on, put a couple quarters boy. in the meter, dude. Alright, dude. So what, uh, what choice is this? So this, I went with a classic red wine. Okay. You ever drink red wine? Not, I mean, not, not very often. Perfect. Nice, fruity, delicious. Fruity, just delicious. Yeah, delicious. Gonna, you're, right. gonna, you're gonna love I'm it. I'm gonna like it? You're gonna like what, it. He's gonna promise? like it too. Oh, let's get this thing going. Ooh. Perfect. Excellent. Vintage. Gentlemen, a toast. One to you, Kiwi, one to you, Cutie Pie, and another to the world's road trip, which has been badass. Amen. I thank you, gentlemen. I thank you. Thank you. Tastes like delicious. This, ta this tastes like, like rock tiger, tiger blood. Wine. Tiger, tiger blood. blood. So strong. Is that the name of the wine? Probably. Yeah. Tiger blood? That's an yeah. awesome name. All right. So you guys have been to Worlds before, yeah? That's back in the day. Okay. I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> I've been to Worlds. Like seeing these young kids nowadays, how they play league compared to my old ass. They would whoop you? Yeah, I, I mean, probably not honestly, because it's a team game and I probably just have four garbage teammates. So it wasn't really my fault or anything, but like, <laughs> but like I mean, you know how that goes. Do you want a little bite? <laughs> okay, huh? take it. There's a little, ooh. Delicious. Ooh. See, it's delicious. Dude, you're an all right guy. I, you know what, you're, you're a pretty all right guy too. Ooh, there we go. Send it around the horn. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> 
let's just say in a magical world, you guys did make it to Worlds together back in the day, right? You both make it to Worlds. You actually make it to finals. You win Summoner's Cup. It's amazing, right? If you could design your own skin, right? What would that be and what would the recall be? I think if if me and Kiwi both made it to Worlds, uh -huh. I'd go for a combo skin of Nunu. And he's the big Yeti dude, and I'll be the little like uh, gorilla dude on his back. <laughs> Will I'm, Yeah, you're Will. No, wait. I'm Nunu Will. the Yeti rider. Wait, is he? Yeah. What? I think Nunu the Yeti rider. Oh shit, you're right. Yeah. What would the recall be? Okay, what would the animation be? Probably me just like whipping him. Like the animal that he is. I turn into a snowball and then... What, no what noises while he's whipping you would you make? Like what kind of noises? Yes. <laughs> right now, you whip him and like, let's do it. What are the... What are the... What are the like... Mm. 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 Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 man, that's it. <laughs> you know, Kiwi, you're not allowed back in the convertible. All right, I'm making the call right now. It's Kitty find me, and we're going by ourselves to the semifinals. Yeah, whatever. All right? <laughs> My God. Give me another barbecue shrimp. Get you as many barbecue shrimp as your little heart desires. All right, listen, Korea, obviously, they're in the semifinals again. You think they're going to take it? You think Faker's going to get three? What are you thinking, Kiwi? Honestly, you think he's gonna get three? The hat trick? He got it. That's a hockey term, so obviously that probably, you know. Yeah, you lost. It doesn't yeah. like I was gonna say that, then I'm not gonna land on you guys. <laughs> Cheers, guys. There we go, all right. The I'll world's go. road trip. Let's world's go. road trip, I'm there. Mm. You ready? Semifinals, ready. New York, road trip to Worlds. Let's bounce. Let's do it. Hell yeah. This Hell is delicious, yeah. by the way. Hey, you're delicious. Damn right I'm delicious. Man, uh, Kiwi <laughs> can't be with you, man. I forgot what that was like, you, dude. I missed I you. Miss you. You're an all right guy. That was pretty refreshing, was it not? I, I love it. That was it. awesome. And delicious. every second of it. Kiwi, was this uh, your idea? This is a good spot. Dude, you know I got the best spots. Let's get yeah, to the semi-finals. New York City? Yeah! Woo! Woo! All right, gentlemen. And off we go. Hell yeah. Hell yeah.